This is the American Law Journal. You get injured at work. You want to get better. The boss wants you to get better. So why is there such a pitched battle in the state of Pennsylvania as to who controls the medical process? Good evening, I'm Christopher Naughton. Tonight, Workers' Comp and the company Doc. Four guests join me tonight. Howland Banks is in the studio for the first time. Partner with Martin Banks, so the law firm authored the Workers' Compensation Handbook, and the firm has been in practice for about four decades. Anthony Salvino is with us this evening, a returning player here on the program with White and Williams. They're the respondents' counsel in the land of workers' compensation. He represents the insurance carriers and the corporations. He also chairs White and Williams' workers' compensation section. George Beatty is back. He has zealously been representing claimants and plaintiffs in both workers' compensation and personal injury matters with Beatty, Sloan, and DeGeneva. Lovely offices there on Locust Street in Philadelphia. And the Honorable Joseph Haken is with us once again. And the judge has spent over two decades on the bench, formerly in a former life, a plaintiff and a defense attorney. So I think he knows a few things about a lot of workers' compensation. Here's a new bill that's being proposed in the state of Pennsylvania. It's been sitting around for the last six or seven months, but if it's passed, it will change the way workers' compensation and doctors work together in that state. A bill that would extend from 90 days to 180 days, the period during which an employee who has filed a workers' compensation claim must seek treatment from an employer-designated medical provider panel. That means you'd have to work with a company doc for 180 days. How many, why is it so important who the doctor is that I see? Well, um, as far as the uh, employer is concerned, they would like to control the treatment from the very beginning. Um, that but why is it a problem if I see the company doc? Or maybe it's not always. Well, I mean, think about it. If you were sick or injured, would you want somebody dictating who you treat with? I wouldn't. Um, and the company doctor obviously is going to have the employer's best interest, not the claimant. Uh, so it really... Um, you know, puts the claimant behind the eight ball when the employer controls their medical treatment from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So, Anthony, it sounds like uh, employees should almost sense that there's some sen there's some sort of prejudice, maybe right from the get go. Uh, I disagree with uh, Sonny, and obviously, I'm I respect, so surprised. Yeah, I, I respect his opinion. He's an excellent <laughs> lawyer, but I just disagree. The employer, as you said. Uh, Chris has their the employees best interest at heart and the idea of a panel is to get the best doctors and specialties there and get the claim at the best medical treatment within the first 90 days yeah but are we to believe in this age of Occupy Wall Street and the middle class uh, you know kind of being carved out that if someone gets hurt they really expect that the company's going to have their initial best interest at heart they should I mean absolutely I mean because more than their own doctor I agreed, because their own doctor, and hopefully what we have a professional class of doctors who understand work injuries and understand that the goal is to get that person back within the 90 days, and hopefully within the 180 days that the bill passes, uh, so they're back to work and being productive and back to gainful employment. That's the goal, and the employer and the uh, claimant, the injured worker, have the same goal, get back to work and, and be productive, not to sit home and, and collect uh, workers' compensation benefits and not to increase costs for the employer. And the Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce, uh, again, surprisingly, tongue-in-cheek, does not disagree with you, uh, Tony. Here's what they had to say recently. The business community applauds doubling the time. Provider panels uh, are a proven benefit to both employees and employers. The lower costs, or they lower cost to businesses, are conducive to quick, effective recoveries and help ensure a smooth transition back to the workforce. George Beatty, what's not to like? It's not to like at all. I mean, Tony's a great lawyer, of course, but what do you expect him to say? The insurance companies drive this process, not the employers, the insurance companies. They donate to the Republican candidates, the Republican candidates get elected, and now they propose legislation that forces an injured worker to go to an insurance company doctor. Come on, common sense. You're a doctor, and they hire you to save them money. So if you come down and say, you're better, you're fine, get back to work, it saves the insurance company money. Now, if a doctor says too often, oh, you really are injured, you better stay out of work, it's going to cost them more money. Come on, there's an inherent conflict of interest. So, in other words, they're, they're going to breach the Hippocratic Oath. No, no, because there's a lot of gray area. That's the problem. I mean, it's not black or white. 
clear. You know, it's, gee, I don't okay. think that's as bad as you're saying mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. It's a subjective symptom. It's not as bad as you say it is. And we're going to send you back. And if you don't go back, we're going to get rid of you. So, and, and, and Judge, and, we don't expect you to be political here at all. But uh, what's at stake here? Well, at stake is trying to find the truth and getting treatment for the uh, claimant as soon as possible. Uh, there are sides, uh, there are points of view on both sides. For example, many of these panel doctors are in close vicinity of the injury where it occurred in the workplace, so it's good in that respect. Uh, an interesting aspect which maybe the attorneys want to comment on is that we don't see too many actually panel doctors who testify. There are other experts that get involved in the case. Uh, uh, so that for the most part, the panel doctors do not testify in contested cases. And if I can follow up on that, Chris, um, sure. I, I agree with the judge. A lot of times the panel providers, they're practitioners, they're treaters, uh, they're not the expert witnesses um, that the attorneys rely on. And in fact, as I said, their goal is to get the person back to, uh, the injured worker back to work as soon as possible. Um, I yeah, Obviously, uh, as uh, George said, I disagree with them. Uh, it's clear to me that the system is, 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 is is conducive to get the person back to work and get the best medical treatment. And as the judge noted, these doctors aren't the professional witnesses, uh, they're just treaters. Well, there must be something at stake here because the length of time that uh, the injured workers had to work just with the company doc has been expanding since the early 1990s. There it is, 14 days, for 14 days before 1993, where again, the company doctor had control of the medical process. In 1993, went up to 30 days. And in 1996, it went up to 90 days. And then again, what's proposed is 180 days. But Helmut, if I have my own, my own doctor, I mean, let's say I go to the company doctor. I have to go to the company doctor as long as the employers jump through hoops, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But what keeps me from seeing my own doctor, A? And B, if I get my own doctor's report, what keeps me from submitting that as proof that I do deserve comp? You can see your own doctor during the 90-day period. The problem is, is that uh, your doctor won't get paid. Um, and, you know, some of our clients do, and we actually, in some circumstances, suggest that they see both the panel doctor as well as their own doctor. Um, but that's, uh, that's the rub. Your panel doctor will not, I'm sorry, your, your uh, own doctor will not get paid during that 90-day period. Is it just a matter of pay, payment, well, though, George? I, I think the, the issue there, too, is people are under the impression that they have to go to the panel doctor. But under the law, they have to jump through hoops. You have to provide the employee with... Uh, notice that they have to go to the panel doctor at the time of hire and at the time of injury. So most of the time, the employer wouldn't be able to win that fight. The problem is, is that the employee goes to his own doctor. His own doctor is not going to get paid until they fight for that bill to be paid. So there's a perception out there that they have to go to the panel doctor. Most of the time, they probably don't have to go. And you know, many times we'll advise people, go to your own doctor, let us talk to him. We will try to make sure he gets paid. Yeah, uh, l let's take a look, and, and these are the hoops that we were just talking about a moment ago and that George actually began to allude to. An injured employee does not have to consult with a company doctor if the employer does not post a list of doctors, if he doesn't give the employee a choice of doctors, if the employee has not, been, has not acknowledged that he's received notification and that he understands. And this acknowledgement can only be in writing. So what, what triggers my being able to go to to, to a doctor of my choice. Let's say one of those four things has not been met. Well, you can. The problem is, is that the doctor, who you want to go to, your own yeah, doctor, right. is going to say, well, where, how do I get paid? And you've got to say to him, the, the employee says, well, it's going to take time. My lawyer's fighting the case. So a doctor wants to know he can get paid. So that becomes a problem. At the is end it, of the day, and, we would win it. And, well, and, how, and, how, and, much, and, how much do these cost, usually, Helmut? If I went to my own doctor, Let's, let, and I know there's a range of injuries, but let's say I've hurt my back. A lot of workers' comp cases are about people who've injured their backs. Whatever the cost, a lot of these injured workers don't have private health insurance through their employer. So if they see their family doctor during the 90-day uh, period, yeah. they're going to have to put that out. out and of what pocket. is that usually? But you're saying is it 100, 200, yeah, 90, it's a few 100 hundred dollars in that neighborhood? And what you're saying, George, I know you've said this on programs before. That sometimes is a threshold too high for them to climb. Sometimes it is. If a person's injured at work and they lose their income and some insurance adjuster some, in some faraway city says, deny the claim. Yeah. That person's out of work, not paying the rent or mortgage, not being able to put food on the table, and you know, is there enough left over to go pay for a doctor report? Unfortunately, sometimes not. Tony Salvino, if I do have enough money and I, and I don't agree with one of your docs or one of the insurance company docs, can I go to my own doctor, pay the 100 200 maybe $500, whatever it takes, and hand that to my employer and go, here, 
Uh, this is a this is a much more accurate depiction of my injury. Actually, a perfect segue for what the point I wanted to make, Chris. Um, it is true that there are, as your um, outline showed, there are hoops that the employer has to go through. However, I could tell you from practical experience, if the employer, uh, for example, a person's injured goes to the employer and says, I've injured myself, and the employer says, well, great, go to the local doctor who's on our panel and didn't have them sign at the time of injury or didn't make them sign afterwards. When the insurance company investigates that claim, if they go to the personal, their own personal doctor, there's going to be a red flag up there. And unless that personal doctor is well known in the community, most likely that claim is going to be denied because the person didn't treat, even though they legally weren't required to treat uh, with the uh, panel provider because uh, the employer told them to go to the panel provider and they on their own went to this other doctor, this family doctor, for example, who wrote them out, uh, uh, out of work slip. And Tony so, says it'll be denied. Tony, you say it'll be denied, but at the end of the day, once the case is fought through, the insurance company will be forced to pay it if they didn't jump through those hoops. If, if, and if the judge grants the claim, but initially right. I'm just saying it's a, it's a red flag to the insurance company, George. And, and my experience is if the employer, even if they didn't uh, follow uh, the employer, and let's use an example of a, of a very small employer, not sophisticated, who doesn't know at the time of hire you have to have them sign the panel provider acknowledgement. If at that point when they report the injury and the, and the employer says, well, go to uh, ABC Clinic, which is our panel, and the employee just says, says no, uh, thumbs or nose at the, uh, at the employer and goes to another doctor, I would suspect that that claim would be denied. Let's go to our phone calls. Roger, you're up first tonight. What's your question? Hi, my question is uh, my wife had an allergic reaction at work to a new room that was probably either dust or mold. And when she reported it, she was required to go to a panel doctor, which she did. That panel doctor sent her to an allergist, which she went to. Subsequently, and, and neither one of those are our family doctors. We don't go to those. Subsequently, the insurance company denied the claim and won't pay the doctors. Now, if they weren't <laughs> going to pay the claim, she would have gone to her own doctor. Mm -hmm. But were you surprised? Because, I mean, I've talked to plaintiff's counsel about this before. Did you believe that going into this that the, the doctor that was going to be treating your wife had an inherent prejudice? Did you sense that going in? Or did you go in somewhat innocent, your wife at least? No, actually, the, the doctor was very, I was very pleased with the doctor and, mm -hmm. and the allergist. Um, but since we were required to go there and the claim was denied, I would have assumed that at least they would have paid for those visits. And they denied them. Unfortunately, there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. I mean, when a claim is denied, the claim is denied in its entirety, both as far as um, the payment of wage loss benefits and the payment of medical bills. And the only way that you can um, force the employer to pay both is by filing a claim petition. Roger, you said that the doctors were really nice and cooperative. Did you ever see their report? Did you see what the doctor said? Because sometimes they're really nice to your face, and then they write a report that undermines the claim. Apparently that happened here. I wouldn't assume that the doctors would have wrote a report saying your wife's disabled and then have the insurance company still deny it. Do you, had you ever seen it? I, I, yeah, I did. The primary doctor uh, totally felt it was it was dust or mold. Then he sent her to an allergist and, and he kind of denied that. But the primary doctor felt it was, he still feels to this day that it was something in the room which has been cleaned at this point. What's, uh, how many, what's the next step here for Roger and his wife? Is there something he can do? See another allergist. Okay. Um, perhaps uh, it may be difficult now because the um, area seems to have been cleaned, but do an air quality study mm -hmm. to see if mold actually exists. Thanks for your call, Roger. Let's go to Candy next. Candy, hello. You're on the show. I was hurt um, 10 years ago at work. I told the company I worked for, I worked for a retailer, and um, I told them I had to get an operation in November, and they denied it. They said I could not go to after January because I worked for a retailer, and I had to work because of Christmas holidays, and I had to wait to after. Okay, well, let, 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 let's first deal with the issue. As soon as I hear 10 years, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, there, yeah, there's... Have you ever been on comp? Has, has, a, has a claim ever been approved? Had you ever received any benefits? What's been the status over the last several years? It's hard to, it, you know, it's hard to evaluate that without knowing those things. Right, yeah. because generally you only have three years from the date of injury to right. file a claim. Right. And if we're 10 years out, then uh, she may be... Uh, Time barred. Although if you got benefits 10 years ago and you received benefits for a period of time and they were suspended, then you may have 500 weeks from that date, which could put you in still in the range of being able to do something about it. But a lot of that depends on the timing of things. 
Uh, you know, Candy, uh, give us a call at our offices this week. It sounds like it's a little bit too deep to go into live here on the air tonight. Sounds like there are a number of issues. Uh, you call us during the week at 888-78-LAW-TV. We will get you pointed in the right direction. Let's go to an email that we've got here. This is from Rick in, uh, in Doylestown. He says that I'm a statistics analyst working eight years for the same employer. Most everything has gone fine until I began having pain in one of my hands, including numbness. My doctor says it may be from overuse from all the computer work I conduct on the job. I'd like to take some time away from the computer and do something else, but my employer won't let me before I file a claim or hire a lawyer. What are my rights? Uh, he needs to see a doctor and get an opinion relating his problem to work. Um, and then get um, some sort of a uh, restriction from his doctor that he can then take to his employer so he can pull himself away from that repetitive work that's obviously causing the problem. All right. I mean, he has seen his doctor, and his doctor says it may be from overuse. So it's, is it one of those uh, situations where the doctor has to get more specific? He does. The okay. doctor needs to say it's his opinion within a reasonable degree of medical certainty mm -hmm. that his work activities are causing this problem. Right. You know, again, we talk a little bit about uh, the politics of it, or at least the fact that a bill may be passed in Pennsylvania soon. I think uh, the House passed it in, in May of 2011. Judge, you know, we've seen these kinds of things run up and down the flagpole before. I know you don't have a crystal ball, and again, we keep you away from anything that is political, but do you see this in, in the future, in the near future for Pennsylvania? You go across the river in New Jersey. Uh, in New Jersey, uh, you know, uh, Tony Salvino's firm doesn't have to worry about uh, those pesky uh, plaintiffs uh, getting involved in not only the first 90 days or 180 days. New Jersey basically says, for the entirety of the process, it's the company doc. So what's in Pennsylvania's future, and might it start looking more like New Jersey's? Uh, I'd be guessing in regard to that. This is strictly a legislative matter. Right. Uh, there are points of view on both sides, and I think it's for the, uh, for the parties that make those policy decisions. Judges don't make those decisions. Gotcha. And, and Tony Salvino, uh, going to you, uh, do you, do you foresee this? happening in in the state of Pennsylvania do you think you're going to, you're going to get this 180 days is it really a viable move on on the part of, of business here in, in PA I, I think it's a it's a valid uh, move uh, I, unfortunately I don't believe it's going to happen in this uh, legislative session and I'm okay. hopeful that with the election next year of the state uh, senators and, and representatives that the movement will take uh, greater force and uh, go before the uh, uh, legislature's agenda again I don't see it happening this year unfortunately gotcha do some of these cases get down to dueling docs? I mean, I mean, I mean, it really is. And but but we heard Tony say earlier on that the the treating physician at the get-go, the panel physician, are rarely called as experts or witnesses. That doesn't happen that often, but that's because they're there sort of to to stop this person in some way to thwart their ability to get the proper treatment mm -hmm. and to shut them down right off the bat. Yep. Right off the bat, if you starve people out, they'll they'll work with a you know. A, deformed hand if they need to work because they have to make a living and the panel doc sends them back because that's his obligation in order to continue as a panel doc. You won't stay on long if you start sending people to doctors and keep them out of work. Chris, can I just jump in? And I'm so, I was waiting for George to just end. I, I couldn't disagree more with that. I, I mean, the doctor, essentially, when when the claimant goes to a panel provider, there is a doctor-patient uh, privilege. And there's also malpractice. If the doctor blatantly sends a person back to work where they don't uh, deserve to go back to work because of health reasons, the doctor can get sued for medical malpractice. Uh, there, there definitely is a privilege there, and there's definitely an obligation on the doctors. You put out their oath, and, and my experience has been that they, they want that person to get better. Uh, and in my opinion, I mean, to be totally disabled is rare. I mean, they can go back and do sedentary work, even part-time work. Yeah, the idea is to get them back to work as soon as possible, but to get them healthy, not to, that they, they don't, that their obligation is to uh, make the person who can't work, work. I but, just want to know, a medical Chris, malpractice is almost like non-existent on things like this, because a medical malpractice case is usually, they're, they're very rare, unlike what the public perception is. I mean, uh, in, in the state of Pennsylvania, some of the counties outside Philadelphia, it's over 90% defense verdicts. The filings have dropped by, by half. There are so few medical malpractice cases now. So if a panel doctor says, I don't think you're in enough pain, I don't see objective evidence of it, and sends him back to work, it's not going to be a med mal case. And a lot of times, they don't even get to see a doctor. They see some physicians. Probably assistant. not even a few years ago, before the terrain changed, would you see a medical malpractice case? Even and, then, and but since 2003, no, there's been a huge drop off of right. med mal. Because, Chris, typically the um, treatment from the panel doctor is limited, so you really don't have um, uh, an issue regarding medical malpractice because the treatment is so limited. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, 
we can say that the uh, panel doctor has the injured worker's uh, best interest, but they know where their, their bread is buttered, so they're obviously going to uh, uh, side with the, uh, the employer and try to get the injured worker back to work as quickly as possible. Tony, I know you probably don't have the statistics, and, and you, you probably uh, couldn't divulge some of these, but you know plaintiff's counsel, they tell me all the time, look, if a doctor is not coming in with uh, the, the kinds of medical reports that are favorable to us over time, they're not going to work for our company anymore. How do you respond to that? Uh, I, again, and I, I feel like I'm in a minority here today, but... Uh, well, you know I, what it is. One <laughs> respondent's counsel, two plaintiffs, and the odds are just about even, so... <laughs> Agreed. Uh, but I, I, it's just... Let me explain. Uh, the panel provider is just not treating uh, injured uh, employees. They also have their own practice, and this is a community, and depending on where you're at, obviously, you're in a big city like Philadelphia, it's more competition, but uh, where I'm from, the Lehigh Valley, it's a community, and if the doctor is not treating his, his patients or her patients with, with due diligence and trying to get them back, it spreads, and it's going to affect their uh, practice. I just couldn't agree, uh, disagree with, uh, you know, esteemed, as like I said, excellent lawyers. They're, they're presenting their case, but I, I think that um, the, the, the truth is that these, these doctors do want to get the person back. And I would tell you another thing. I represent a lot of the uh, larger corporations, and they really do, and where the 30-year uh, employees are there, if, if they're, the employer believes that a 30-year employer is not getting good medical treatment, they're going to get involved, they're going to call the panel provider and say, you get this guy back to work. Well, I found someone who does agree with you, Tony, and Good. he just sent an email. His name is George from Pottstown. He says, I am a member of the Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce, and I wholly support the new bill. Statistics don't lie. When a worker or his lawyer choose a doctor, the process gets dragged out, takes 40 days longer to get people back to work. It costs money, and it hurts the employee, too. Can't anyone see this? Now, I, I don't know who took the statistics, but let's say it takes 40 days longer to get back to work when someone's got their own doctor versus the, 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 the company doc. That's Maybe, a strong argument. Well, you know what? Maybe it takes 40 days less because they jam the person right back or starve them out. Maybe you should look at it the other way because the Workers' Compensation Act is supposed to be humanitarian and remedial. It's supposed to help injured workers. It's not supposed to help the Chamber of Commerce. So I think we need to focus on the injured workers and providing for their families. And I'd like to respond to Tony. At least he said that some of the big corporations do certain things. But when we're talking about mom and pop employers, small companies, they're not the ones making these decisions. They buy insurance, and there's giant insurance company there. And this giant insurance company, they're the ones picking the doctors. They're the ones requiring people to go to panel physicians, not small employers. The big insurance companies are the ones running this process. And Chris, for me, it's more fundamental than that. Um, it really boils down to a matter of choice. Why should an injured worker be treated any differently than anybody else? You and I can choose who we treat with. Why can't an injured worker? Right, and but but again, it comes down. It's a, it's a matter of money, because if I do get a doctor's report, it doesn't preclude me from submitting that for my workers' compensation eligibility, even in the first 90 to 100 days. Correct? We're talking about somebody's health. I mean, money should really be secondary under those circumstances. Uh, well, I I understand that, but but it, it may be that the argument is made at the back end where they get that money later on. I understand going I understand going in, if I work with the company doc and I want to work with my own doc, I may be out a few hundred dollars or more. And that's a lot to, to people who are not getting their paycheck. And I'm not diminishing that whatsoever. But they may get that money back at the back end. You know what? It's, though, possible. I, and, it's possible. And what's more important is if I'm not going to get workers' compensation because the company doc's not going to give it to me, maybe my doctor has the evidence at the beginning where I can at least get temporary workers' compensation benefits. So don't you encourage people, even in that time period, especially if they have the wherewithal, go get your own medical opinion and then let's see where the, the, the pieces uh, fall. But that's the key question. Uh, do they have the wherewithal? That's and, it. Right. Okay. But, but that's what it boils down And to. I think the Chamber of Commerce <laughs> fellow that talked about statistics, that's right on. The statistics. Think about statistics. There's a bean counter in the giant insurance company somewhere, and he's got a statistics. Dr. A sends 79% of the people right back to work, and we save money. Dr. B over here, gee. He's been leaving people stay out of work and get some benefits. That's costing us more money. Well, when the bean counter decides who to renew the contract with, come on, Tony, I think, you know, it's human nature. If you're not helping the big company's bottom line, they're going to pick somebody that will. And gotcha. Chris, Go if I could uh, throw something Absolutely, in Absolutely, Judge. Uh, I, I'd like to Always. have the attorneys perhaps address uh, that the fact that the claim has to be accepted or rejected within the first 21 days. 
and how does that impact That's on this? That's a great, uh, I wish I had said that, asked that question, Judge, but it's a, it's a great question. So it's just so I'm clear that I understand the judge, within 21 days, the employers, the employer, or the carrier for the employers got to make a determination, we're going to turn you down, we're going to give you comp, or we're going to give you temporary comp. And that's another reason, if they get a panel doctor to say, you're not bad enough to be out, we're sending you back in, within the first 21 days, they deny the claim, and then there's no what they call unreasonable contest, because as claimants lawyers, Hal and I are always looking and we're saying, did you have a basis to deny this thing in the first 21 days? And if they don't have that panel doctor, that old reliable doc that's going to send them back, then they could be hanging out there and get hit for extra, extra money for unreasonable contest, it's called. Okay. So I think that's a good point to judge me. All right, Hellman, your thoughts. I yeah, wasn't I mean, making that point to be on any one side. <laughs> I understand, I understand. Uh, because on the other hand, Again, I, I'd like to point out that okay. we don't see panel okay. doctors and we don't hear their testimony. Halman. Uh, the panel doctor, uh, the, he does typically support the uh, employer's denial during the, the, that period. So, you know, if you had the opportunity to see your own doctor before the expiration of the 21-day period, it would give claimants a fighting chance uh, to have the employer at least pick up their claim on a temporary basis and issue a temporary notice of compensation payable rather than denying the claim from the very beginning and starving them out. And Tony, I uh, want to get defense perspective here and, and last shot uh, tonight for you uh, before we have to leave the air, but uh, 21 days that the judge raised and uh, the employer has to, you know, more or less commit what about that time period? Yeah, it's a critical time period, and then investigation has to be done by the insurance company or the self-insured employer, and critically, they will look at the panel provider's records to determine if it's going to be accepted or denied. And as you said, Chris, the temporary notice uh, uh, can buy at least another 90 days for it to be further investigated, because 21 days is a strict deadline. But if I may, and I'll be quick, just the fallacy of the injured worker's attorney's arguments here. If assuming that the panel provider doesn't have the best interest of the employee at, at, at heart, um, and they go back to work not able to go back to work, what's going to happen is they're not going to be able to continue working, and they're going to rush essentially to George and to Sonny, who are excellent attorneys, go, uh, send them to their own doctors, and we're going to be in litigation, and the costs have just skyrocketed from the 40 days up to about 180 days of the person being out of work and, and stuff of that nature. So just the key is, as I keep saying, get the best medical treatment in the 90 days. Get that injured worker back to Very work. Very good, uh, Tony. Thank you. Uh, and again, if you need more information tonight, folks, uh, go to our website or, or tweet us or go to our Facebook page. I want to thank Helen Banks from Martin Banks for joining us tonight. Anthony Salvino with White and Williams. George Beatty, also plaintiff's attorney with Beatty Sloan and DeGeneva. And the Honorable Joseph Haken, uh, workers' compensation judge now for 25 years. For all of us here at the American Law Journal, until next Monday, night. Case closed. This week's American Law Journal has been made possible in part by Beatty, Sloan, and DeGeneva. Personal attention for those hurt at work or suffering from serious injury. Martin Banks, we wrote the book on workers' comp law and the Legal Intelligencer, the nation's oldest legal newspaper for lawyers.